Okay, who of you have done some crypto? Who of you have done crypto parties or explained something for your parents or set up the computer? And who was quite hard pressed to explain all this to the others? Because, well, it's not as easy as it seems to be just to be crypto. And we always have to do the balance between safety on one side and usability on the other side. And Rido Wittmond will now explain us how it is possible to combine both in one go by tinkering a little bit around with um, the protocols. Give a warm applause, please. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming this uh, so close to midnight. Sometimes they say five minutes to midnight is the point where you really have to take action. So maybe it's uh, a good coincidence that this talk is just five minutes to midnight. Because cryptography should be easy, but up so far um, everyone finds it hard and finds it hard to do correctly. So uh, after the hour, I hope I can give you another uh, vision. <laughs> So yeah, uh, this talk is not about cryptography. I'm not a cryptographer, and I hardly un understand any of those cryptographic protocols, uh, but that's not, a, that's not really the issue. Uh, I understand how to use them, and uh, this talk is about making it easy to use cryptography. Effectively, uh, I'll make it so easy that you don't even know that the cry cryptography is there. It should work for the user. So, what I want to uh, achieve... Oh, now I have to scroll here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do things with cryptography that probably no one has done before. And maybe if some people have done it before, they might find it crazy. Uh, the things will be crazy, but I hope it will uh, show you uh, things that can be done uh, if, if you go the crazy way. And uh, at the end, I'd love to uh, hear your reactions. <laughs> So, let's consider WhatsApp. Is, uh, WhatsApp, is, is it easy? Yes, there's uh, one billion people who can use it. Uh, so, yeah, ease of use of WhatsApp is not really a problem. It's, it's also end-to-end -end secure, so that's something that it's already often in the marketplace. But how secure is it? And um, uh, the, the, uh, the thing with... Uh, with WhatsApp, it's, it's a closed binary. So you don't know what you exactly get. They, they use the uh, signal protocol from Open Whisper Systems, from some people who really think about cryptography, but you never know what they put in the binary, so you, it, it's, that's an issue. The other thing uh, about uh, WhatsApp, they maintain the address book, which contains the, the list of what, what public keys contain to which users. So that's also uh, in their hands. And the third part about WhatsApp, it's that it's um, yeah, I lost my speaker note, so I have to do it by ha from head now. So that's a challenge. Uh, the, the, the last thing about it, all the traffic goes via the network. So if, if they manage to do something sneaky, you probably ne will not find out. So would you trust uh, your, your life secrets w with, um, with some end-to-end -end system that you cannot verify? Well, I don't, so I don't use it. And that was the issue of another talk today. But uh, yeah, WhatsApp, I'm not really so sure. So let's build our own WhatsApp. And this time we built it with secure end-to-end -end messaging. And the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll show you is a demo of what we can, uh, of how it will look like. There it comes. Uh, oh, I hope it's big enough. I'll start my user agent. The user agent is the program that does all the cryptography for the end user. So the user doesn't have to do much work. I should I press this full screen button? I hope it's the right one. 
green one. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, d there it is. It okay, does it look better to you? Well, it, that's not really. This window just is the debug output of it. So I'll go to my browser, open it. Do I open it? Yes, there it is. And here is the website. It looks like, like the 80s, but yeah, I only promised you three things. Easy, secure, and anonymous. Beautiful is something else. So yeah, this, uh, this, this is a blog site. This is a, a site where people can open a blog and write their, uh, write their information. So let's do that. We'll let, let's check out the blogs. Oh dear, it's completely empty, it's to completely fresh. Usually you would find a, li uh, a list of blogs and you can read them. But yeah, we're the first one, so let's create a blog. And no. Oh yeah, oh dear. I need to have an account. Well, it's SHA, so let's create the account. SHA1. Oh dear, an old account, but let's register. And here on top, the white part, that's my user agent that says that I'm now logged in with user SHA1. And this is the site. So I'll uh, write a blog and press send. And now here is the blog. So that's. Let's go back to the list of blogs, and there it is. So my username, as you can see here, is Shaban, double, ap uh, double ampersand, cryptoblog.domain name. And I use a double at because it's not an email address. You can't send mail to it. It's just an identity. So there's another user. Opening their agent. Browsing the blogs, and the, there's a blog. There's a blog, and now we can send a comment. And yeah, I'm even so lazy for this demo, it's late. I'll just accept the standard and say, post it. And here's the blog, and here's my comment. This is all public information. In my, in, the pro in, in, in my protocol, I, uh, the, uh, uh, I have two types of inf information. You have public information, li like this, and you have private information. So let's do some private message. So I want to send a private mes message. Oh dear, I need to log in. Well, I'll log in. SHA2, we're improving. And there's the text, and I can send the message. And it will be delivered. And that's all what you can do with messages. So go back to the other user, check out messages, and there's the message. Now, I think I've done the same with ease of use as, uh, as WhatsApp. But the difference is this is fully end-to-end -end encrypted, and not even the website, this blog site, can read what the user, SHA2, Sha just wrote to user SHA1. And later I'll, I'll show you, I'll, later I'll show you how. And for that, I'll go back to my presentation. What's the button for that? Richter, Richter, it's a, it's a Mac, is it? Say again. I'll okay, I'm stuck here. The host key and F. Yes, you're right. Thank you.
Okay. Um. So you've seen my my blog and WhatsApp. Well, there's a, there's some differences uh, between them. In WhatsApp, you have a single identity, and that's your telephone number. In this blog, you can have as many identities as you want. As you want. There's no telephone number to tie it to. Uh, you just created names SHA-1 and SHA-2. I could have created anything. In, uh, in WhatsApp, there's no anonymity because it uses your, your phone, phone number as, as identifier. And phone numbers, yeah, they're long-lived. You pr probably have one that you use for all your things. You may have a second telephone if you're uh, in the position that you need one for your job or something, or if you're a drugs dealer, then you may have two or three, but that's it. <laughs> Uh, the other difference is with, with, with WhatsApp, yeah, I um, need to grow a bit in the user base. <laughs> so why does WhatsApp only offer a, sing a single user identity? Well, they're in the business of spying on your users, and even though it's end-to-end -end encrypted, they really want to know who you're talking to, and probably, if, if, yeah, they want to have the, the option to get into your data stream if some government uh, thinks they need, they need to know that. But yeah, why, why go to the service provider? If, 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 if we can get that risk out, I, I would be happy. So I think I can do that. So here's, here's the first strange thing that I'm going to offer you. A public, publicly posted message that is signed with a private key is effectively a key exchange. I wrote in my blog uh, from user SHA-2 Sha to user SHA-1, I wrote a private message. I, normally, I wouldn't know who the other user is. This time it was me, but usually I wouldn't know it if, if there's a block on, on, any other, uh, on any other subject. Then, yeah, you see, see the text of block, you, you see the handle, but you don't know the user. And uh, this, this, with this protocol, that's the same. You don't know who the other user is. But once you have validated that key, you have a... a, a, a a, secret, uh, a secure path between you and a stranger. And once you have that secure path, no one can get in between. You don't know who it is, but you have a secure path. But don't forget, it's still a stranger, don't, so don't tell anything that's uh, dear to your heart, or don't tell anything that you're late with taxes or something like that. Uh, you never know what the other party may do, but that's with every communication protocol. So uh, the thing is, I have this, sign, I have this uh, message, message but I need to validate it. So let's see how we can validate a certificate or a public key. <laughs> this is one way. This is the PGP uh, key signature parties. And what they're doing uh, is validating each other's passport. And if, if they're happy with that, then they, they sign an uh, email uh, they, they sign this PGP uh, ad address. They sign the PGP. Uh, keys of, of other users, so you get, create this network. But what happens, these are validated by, pass, by passports, so you lose your anonymity because everything you do with your key is registered, to, is effectively tied to your passport. It's not out there, but if, if, you, trust, uh, if, if you use that PGP web of trust, you're effectively using public, uh, the personal identities of the person, like my, exactly my identity, who I am, and not just a nickname. So, it's, um, is it anonymous? Absolutely not. So, let's build our own CA. This part, I will really get technical. So, um, the website, in, in, in my blog site demo, it runs its own certificate authority. And this certificate authority is only used by the site. No, no other site is going to use it because uh, every site, uh, uh, yeah, a site wouldn't trust a certificate authority from another one. We've, we've seen the examples with the commercial certificate authorities. Digi Notar got hacked and they got sent, sent out uh, false certificates. Uh, there's, there, there's, there's other ones later. Uh, so don't trust a certificate authority from another. As, uh, even if you pay money for it, it might not be worth it. So w what I do, I r connect the site to the certificate authority. They are just part of one, one ident from, they are part from one, uh, one group, uh, no, one, one uh, let me try again. <laughs> the certificate authority is, is connected to the site. 
the, it signs the client certificates for the site, and these client certificates are what, uh, what lets the user log in into the, uh, into the, into the site. And a certificate, in this case, it's just a nickname, the public key, and the stamp from the user. There is no real name in it, there is no need for it. So, for signing up at, at the site, you saw that the site doesn't need an email address, it doesn't ask you for it, it doesn't ask for passwords, and doesn't run passwords twice. It just accepts the certificates. And you've seen uh, how, how fast it was. I typed in my name, and I got a certificate at that point. But there's one requirement for, the, for these certificates. If I have a normal blog site, uh, for example, um, a, a blog site or new site, say Slashdot, for example, you can have your, your handle, but there's only one of them. With this, I need to have the same. I want to, to, to have each user a single handle, or more handles, but, or if they want to. But I want to tie each handle to, 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 to a, a certain uh, uh, public key. It's, it's, and that's the public key that belongs to the private key of the user. But um, um, the, re the reason why is that people are good with ha uh, handling these user handles. But the, the computer, for the computer, that's just, just a string. It can't do anything. The computer needs, to, needs the public key. But public keys are, are way, way too um, will will for users. No one can remember the public key. No one can do even uh, the RSA calculations in their head. So that's, uh, that, that won't work. So the validation rules of, of this certificate of authority is very simple. If the nickname hasn't been used before, then, si then sign a certif certificate for the user. And for this demo, I made sure there was no user SHA-1 and SHA-2. Otherwise, I would have gotten an error. And if you get an error, you get it immediately. So because this, this sign up, it's just a database lookup to see if the name is used, and it's a, a, a sign operation. That, and that can, go that can go quite fast. How fast can you get, get a certificate? Well, you can get it in a, in a tenth of a second. Basically, a single HTTP tra transaction. Just look up the name, and if the name is not, is not used, we'll, we'll sign it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I already mentioned it. Why the unique names? I, I wanted to have this to make sure that users, uh, um, that, that, you, that the, the usernames, the account names are, uh, are unique and the private keys are, are, st are stuck to that. So we, we have this, uh, we have the certificates. Now, how does the login process look? Well, we have the, the certificate or authority above. He's doing nothing anymore, actually, because both, par both participants on this site, Mr. Bob on the left and Ms. Janet on the right, they already have the certificates they can log in. Just what would happen with commercial certificate of, uh, certificates. So this made the login process very, very quickly, very easily. But this is actually what we came here for. We want to um, yeah, re read the messages, see the, uh, read the blogs, and if we find an interesting blog, we want to send, send either a comment or a private message. So we want to send a private, manage, uh, private message so that the, the user requests the certificate with the, with the public key, encrypts the message, sends it to the site, because the site is the only, uh, per, uh, only uh, Entity that knows the, the other users and can send messages. There is no email, there is no back channels or whatever. The site has to handle it. So the site has the option to uh, block the message or give it, give it on. That's the only thing that the site can do, decide not to give it on. But in this case, the, the message gets on. But Bob has a problem. This might happen. It's getting a bit more complicated. But Bob is still requesting a, a public key with the certificate from Ms. Janet, but the certificate authority is giving a wrong one. It's, it's giving a, a duplicate, as I call it. And, but there's no way for Bob to verify that it's correct. So what happens? He sends his message, and the, the site cooperates with, with, who cooperates with the cer certificate authority, changes the message for something else, and yeah, you never know what's happening. So this is really a problem. So, how can Bob verify that, that he's got the right certificate? Well, for that, now I'm really going crazy. 
I'll, I'll start this global registry of dishonesty. It's a central registry. It should be worldwide unique. Everyone would, would, would need to know it. And everyone who comes to a site with this protocol, with this login protocol, uh, they, they are uh, encouraged to submit their certificate to the registry. It's, uh, this, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit like the uh, Google's protocol certificate transparency for server certificates, but in this case, I'll use it for client certificates. And why? Well, in this case, um, you, you might see it at the bottom, but bottom right. Uh, when Bob requests, Bob, Bob doesn't request the certificates from the CA from the CA anymore. He asks for the, at the registry, which certificates do you have for this user ID? And the user ID is just the username. In this case, for my demo, I used SHA1 and SHA2 at add domain name. So that will be the key to look it up. If Miss Janet is looking up, she, she gets just one certificate, so that's good. So she, she, yeah, she is quite sure now that there is only one certificate in the registry. For, 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 for Bob, if he's going to look up Je, uh, Janet's certificates, there are two. There's one, for, 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 there's one from Miss Janet herself, and there's the fake one from the, from the certificate authority. And now the reason why I call it registry of dishonesty, this is proof, this is uh, uh, cryptographic proof that the certificate authority violated the rule that the nicknames should be unique, because now there's two, two certificates with the same nickname. And what a good user agent should do, a user agent should detect this and say, OK, I'm not going to connect to this site anymore because they violated even the simple rule of not uh, signing two certificates with the same, with the same uh, name. And what the, the registry could do, as soon as it detects both, it could even send out a news message out, out to the world saying that this certificate authority is bad and it should be, it should be uh, removed from the internet. Actually, the internet death penalty. With this really crazy central registry, you can be sure that if there's only one, and if, you, uh, if, if, there's, if there's one, uh, one certificate, then you can be sure that there's, there, there's no manipulations going on and that you have the correct, uh, you have the correct uh, certificate with the correct public key of the other party and you can use, use the key to send messages. With this validation, you know that the certificates are, um, are uh, trustworthy. So here's, here's my statement. A published signed message, an independent verification of the uniqueness of the nickname, equals a verified key exchange. And that's really the crazy idea that I'm uh, bringing over tonight. And if this holds, and I'm not sure because this protocol really needs an audit, and, uh, the, the, because yeah, there might be things that I have overlooked, but if this is true, we can do some very great things. So what can we do with it? We can do our own WhatsApp. We can do, sh we can, yeah, you can, you can use it for shops. And, but, and, but why would a shop, say Amazon, want to use this protocol? Well, maybe because it's easier to sign up. Maybe it's, uh, they want to give a damn about privacy. Uh, or they want to do, if they, if they, yeah, they might want to uh, make it look like they, 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 give, they give about it. Uh, but it also works for, for, other, uh, for other sites. Video streaming sites, for example, Netflix, they really don't know who your identity is as, as long as they get your money and they, 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 know, who, who, how, how to they know who to stream this, the, the videos to. And if you're going, going into so, so, some more fancy stuff, uh, there was this uh, site, uh, Ashley Madison, and they got leaked. And at least one of the users committed suicide because his identity was leaked. If Ashley Madison would have used this, this protocol, that, that, that person could have deleted the private key from his computer and had plausible deni deniability that he wasn't, wasn't the person. So this protocol might even have saved a life. And uh, yeah, the, the real thing is uh, these, these, these uh, use cases, they need to know the, know the user by, by a certain name, but they know, don't need to know the user's real name. They need to, don't need to use the real, the real identity. If it's important, it can, can always be asked later. That's, uh, that's not an issue. And if, if you need, for example, a postal address to send something to, yeah, you have to ask it, and the user should give it, otherwise he doesn't get this package. But 
that's that's the end, that's outside of this protocol. But newspapers, I added newspapers to it. But, uh, um, and why would a newspaper use this protocol? Well, newspapers are mostly seen as a one-to-many uh, uh, broadcast per, uh, method. You, you just subscribe to the paper, you get, you get your thing, you read it, and you uh, put the, the fish from, from tomorrow in it. But, but also, newspapers need, need in, input too. There's, uh, there's, there's feeds, there's um, letters to the editors, and there's discussion forums, and there are whistleblowers. So, what would Edward Snowden do? Suppose the Guardian uses, uses this blog site, and Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald publishes his articles there, and every article he writes is signed with his private key. Reading, uh, reading the, the, the articles, Edward Snowden would be, sh would be able to verify that there's only one uh, public key and one nickname uh, combination in that registry of dishonesty. If he's happy with that, he can send a message. What would he send? And for that answer, I'll go back to the demo. There we have it. Close it. This was my user one. I'll log out as user. Go there again. Oh yeah, this is easy. My the user agent also works as a as a key store and uh, as a bookmark site. It knows what users I have at the site. But this time I'm going to create a new blog. Under the name Gigi. And that's Glenn Grewald, and he writes something about FBI. And post it. There's some other user. No, is it the same user? Oh, no, there's, there's, two, there's two blocks, that's, that's correct. So there's two blocks, and a, a certain user reads the blocks, says, interesting articles, I have some documents that I want to uh, give to this journalist, but I don't anyone to know. So what would, Glenn, uh, what would Edward Snowden do? He sends an invitation to connect. Oh dear, he needs to create an account. Oh well, that would be Citizen4. Oh, something went wrong. Maybe I already used that nickname. Okay, let's create an anonymous one. Oh damn, there goes my demo. Let's see if I can show what... Um, sent an invitation con to connect. All right, um, too bad it goes wrong. Uh, but this sh shows roughly what you can expect if I can... Increase the letters a bit. Yeah, the computer creates a listening point. Actually, it, that would be a Tor hidden servers. And if you follow with, with the thing, um, this the user your user agent would send that hidden hidden server uh, address in in a, in a secret message to the other side. Then you wait until the other side uh, connects. And if the other side connects, you authenticate each other with the keys you have here, which you already verified with the, uh, with the registry of dishonesty, so they are unique. And what, what happens? I'm really, uh, um, two users who have never sp seen each other before can connect via Tor and can I send information. And that's what you can do with, with, with a protocol that allows you to verify keys of strangers. And is, uh, I'm going to give, give it another try. Maybe it works better. Yes, it does. I have this anonymous account, something. So I'll send the invitation. And the invitation will be delivered. 
So I'll go back to my other account. There should be a message waiting. Yes, this is the message. This is yours, Glenn Greenwald, by the way, that I'm having here. So this is actually what, what I'm getting. And behind it is a Tor hidden server address. So if I press the thing, this, this agent is going to connect via Tor to the other agent. And I get a dialing error. These things happen. The reason is Tor is a bit slow with setting up the network. So actually, I'm a bit too fast. So try again. Yes. And now I have this. Can't see which one this is. The user. Now I have this information, and here I can something about NSA. And that went over Tor. So two users, two people who never have never seen each other, are able to send messages over Tor. Try to do that with Facebook. Try to do that with WhatsApp. Try to do that with uh, Google Chat. And the, and, the, and the nice thing is, not even my website knows that this is happening. This communication path is happening directly over the Tor network. So my, my, my blog site that introduced those people, it's, it's out, of, out of the picture. It, it, it can disappear from the earth. Th those two, th these two users can, can forever connect over, over this Tor network. Although, uh, Glenn Green Greenwald can initiate the connection to the other side. The, the other side, Snowden, can't do it yet. But for that to happen, Snowden should just do the same and send the message over this connection, and they have a direct connection. They can keep communicating forever over Tor, and no one would be, would be wiser. So all it takes to set up a, a, a Tor hidden, hidden server between two users is one single message where you can verify the keys. So one message is all that it takes. And I think I'll go back to the... What is sitting? Where's my mouse there? Oh. So, in um, this um, 20 minutes, I hoped to have shown you that signing up for, for websites can be much easier. Logging in can be just as simple as a click on a button. We have end-to-end -end private messages, and you can have as many identities as you, as you want. In this example, each of the user agents already had two identities, one for my SHA-1 and SHA-2, and the other was the Greenwald and Snowden versions. So, there's, as each website has its own certificate authority, they're not, they're not coupled to each other. And um, because of that, if, if I have, have a, a website here, and there's another website over there, and I connect with the same agent to the other website, I'll create a new private key, I create a new identity, and the two can't be linked by the sites. And with, with that, um, it's, it's easy to, to, yeah, to have many different identities at many different sites. And w by doing that, I prevent uh, the situation where sites are u uh, using my email address and to, 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 get, uh, to get to know me and get to, to link them, link these accounts behind my back. So yeah, what, what else can I, do, uh, can, can, can I give you? I can give Tor channels to everyone. And yeah, if that's, if that's happening, that's... Um, everyone is going to use Tor channels for, for everyone, then that, yeah, that probably makes me a Torerist. But yeah, so be it. And yeah, the, the good thing about being a Torerist is if all the connections are going over Tor, then the whistleblowers can, can hide in their normal traffic and they are very hard to find. And I think in this society, that's something that we really need. And yeah, uh, I said it before, um, 
I might be mistaken, there might be something wrong, um, don't know yet what. Um, I really love to see people uh, attacking it, uh, finding, finding flaws, finding issues. Um, because, yeah, it really can use an uh, uh, a few audits to, to see if what I'm bringing up is really going to work or if it only stays a dream. But if you want to know more, there's a few sites where you can find the information in the source code. And with that, I hope, you, yeah, you have enjoyed this presentation. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Um, if there are questions, uh, please line up at the microphones. Um, <laughs> yes, and please wait. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, okay. I'm there are two microphones, uh, then you can also adjust the height. So let's, let's start here. All right, so I have one, uh, one question. Uh, how do you handle reissuance? Because it's a pretty typical scenario that somebody will lose their private key or, for example, it gets compromised, so they will have to replace their private key and therefore the certificate. Uh, how is that handled in this model? I don't handle it, it, I don't handle it yet. That's one of the things, by making it so strict, you get all these nice properties. And these properties may fail if you're going to do a revocations and if, if, or if you're going to uh, have to, yeah, a revocation would probably be easy because that's a message that you sent into the registry of dishonesty saying this one is, is revoked. But I don't have yet a protocol uh, for creating a new one. If you create a protocol and you adhere to the protocol and you see the old one has revoked and there's a new one, it would be still safe. But I didn't design that yet. Right, because the issue I can see is that any time you create a second uh, key, it will also create a second certificate and therefore be automatically considered invalid by the network because there are two certificates. Exactly, that's, that's the original rule that I gave it, but that's the very sim simple version. Uh, if you want to revoke a, revoke a key and you, can, and you still have the, the private key to revoke it, then you can send a revoke message, then the old one is invalid and you can create a new one. And that would be the second rule you add to the registry of dishonesty. But if everyone agrees on those rules, then it would work. All right. Yeah, I had the same question. And so this is also for Bob and Janet, this application? Um, sorry, repeat it, please. Uh, I had the same question as uh, the previous uh, uh, questionnaire, but uh, this application is not only for Assange, but also for um, Bob and Janet, from your example? Like, the, the people who were not really technical, Bob and Janet. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I tried to, I've designed it in, in mind that normal people can use it. Okay. And uh, all the talk about uh, certificates and cryptography, that, that's, that's for you. But for, for Bob and Janet, it's just the, us the user interface you saw in green. It's just create an account and typing things. Have you things. thought about uh, usability, uh, f um, about uh, what if they're in different time zones? Or uh, do they have to um, make uh, send a private message? Like, I will try to connect to you via this store channel around that time? Because otherwise I would send an invitation and this window would put up and I would go make some coffee, go to the grocery store, go back to my job and then there might be one message afterwards and then the next day I get one message back perhaps? Or? Uh, yeah, I've, I think the, your question is uh, do, do both users need to be online at the same time? Is that the question? Uh, no, if you thought about uh, usability, because uh, if I send you this request and I live in another time zone and you see the request uh, the next day and you accept the request and the connection opens and I leave my computer on all the time because oh. I care about this, uh, yeah. you, uh, but you, then you, we send each other a message like twice a day or, or, and we have to pre, uh, uh, we would have to send a private message first. First to no, we don't have to send private messages first, but we would have a real slow communication if we're in different time zones. Uh, yeah, the user, user interface really could use a, 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 a beef up. Um, for for a, 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 yeah, production version of that, you really want to have this window that comes up and says there's this connection from someone where you can type things in and. But okay, yeah, great. you don't know what the other user, what the other, where the other user is, what time zone, if they're awake or not. You just get a message and you have to connect. Uh, any improvements on that protocol is just between you and the other party. So 
if this will, uh, if this succeeds and this comes up, then probably many people will start creating protocols for just for this situation. What to do if you create a hidden service? I just sh showed uh, the, the chat version. I also have a uh, vo voice uh, communication version, but on a single computer with with only one audio card, that's very hard to demonstrate. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if, uh, my, my, my most simple version of that video, uh, of, of, that, of that audio communication uh, channel, it really opens the microphone and, and, and the speakers and connects them to each other, so it would be really a security risk to, because you don't see that happening. So can, for, a, for a, a, a real protocol, a uh, real uh, pr production version, uh, you want to have this protocol that m makes, your, makes a phone bell ring and then you can say, yes, I want to open it and yes, I want to answer and then you have it. Great. I can see my parents understanding that. That's, your, your parents could understand that, yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, I've been a victim of a uh, in, man in the middle attack and uh, it was through a, a secure channel, I thought. So, um, really, I think you're system is not going to work because you put the, middle in, the man in the middle and tag in the wrong place. Usually it is installed on your own PC, which means that every connection to the outside, also to the registry, is being taken over. And so you have a uh, registry that, uh, yeah, if a man in the middle of tag can uh, fake the registry and send you wrong information, then it's not going to work. Uh, true. So I I, true. I, I I I don't know if you have a solution to this. Uh, true. Uh, I have two answers for that. I hope I can remember okay. both. Uh, the first one is uh, this problem counts not just for this protocol but for every current protocol because our operating systems really are not uh, up designed to keep secrets uh, from malware. If you have if you if, if the program runs on your computer, is it, is it Windows, Mac, or you, uh, or uh, Unix? It has access to everything, including your keys, and it can manipulate every program. So that's one problem. Our operating systems aren't good for that. And based, based on that, lots of other nice things that we could have in the past didn't, didn't come to, uh, to fruition. For, for example, uh, the electronic cache from D uh, David Chum, DigiCache, also had the same problem. You just want to store private keys on your computer, and if some malware comes in and ste steals those private keys, then, yeah, you're, you're, then, you're, then you're lost. And uh, now what was the other thing? Um, the man in the middle, uh, de de detection on your computer. Um, what was, could you repeat the question? Then I think I'll get, get back to the answer. <laughs> if, if you are a victim of a man in the middle attack, he can, he can just... Uh, break all the connections, also the connections to the centralized registry. Yeah, and that, that I think that, that was the keyword, the yeah, registry. The, the, the registry is the weakest point, point because, yeah, if it gives the information, if, if, if two people have really registered the same name with a different set of certificate, but the man of the middle attack just uh, uh, gives a different answer, leaves the one record out, then you still think, okay, it's correct, but it's really, it's not correct. It is. Uh, it is the wrong person, and with the. Do, do you understand what I mean? I, s I see where, where you're getting at. Uh, so yeah. then, then you think you are safe, but the man in the middle attack, who could be on your computer, but could anywhere, could be anywhere in the network, gives you wrong information, and then it's broken. Yes, that 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 might happen. So yeah, um, I'm not really sure how to address that, but maybe that's one of the dragons that that's in there. Next question. Hi. So uh, I also have a question about this uh, registry of dishonesty. Um, what happens if the malicious website does not actually report the, um, the certificate? So you only reported it. So there is only one there. What would happen if the certificate authority uh, created oh. a, a second um, a, s a second certificate for a user, but it didn't post it into the certificate of repo uh, into the registry of dishonesty. That's your question. Um, exactly. Well, in that case, uh, as both parties will look up the the key in the certificate of re uh, in the registry, this the, the malicious certificate doesn't get asked from the from the uh, 
from the uh, certificate authority. The certificate authority can create as many as they want, but as soon as the, he publishes it into the registry, the, the alarm will, will go off. So he, he can't do anything with it. I see. Thanks. And uh, to help you answer, if the certificate authority would be first uh, to, to publish my, uh, a fake certificate for me in, in that registry, and I wouldn't publish mine, then I would be able to detect it after the, uh, after the first communication with another partner, because the other partner would get, would get a certificate and publish it because there was, no, there was nothing. So if the other one would publish it, then I might detect it. So after a full round trip of messages, where both parties would s submit th their certificates to the registry, you have, uh, you have the uh, certainty that you, you, you know if there's a man in the middle or not. Thank you. Next Thanks. question, please. So, who runs the registry and why do you trust them? Uh, good question. This registry uh, should not be run by the, by the certificate authority or by the site because they would be able to manipulate it. At best, it would be either run by some consumer organization or uh, uh, maybe even better, a peer-to-peer -peer net distributed network over the world run by volunteers, maybe run by some ISPs or other, other parties, but independent from the sites. I was wondering about the question about the man, man in the middle attack, whether there wasn't some confusion between a man in the middle attack and a compromised client system. Um, if your client system is compromised, yes, you cannot trust an answer from the site. But I believe you mentioned to me once you had a way of identifying the actual site with a great amount of security. Uh, I think Dane was involved, right? Uh, true. But I'm not sure if that would answer his question. But to answer your question, um, um, yeah, um, uh, I don't think it will answer this, this gentleman's question, but uh, in this protocol I haven't shown you because of this, this time and this is probably already deep enough. Uh, one way for the uh, user agent uh, to, is to verify uh, if the site is, 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 is the correct site. The way it does it, the, the certificate authority and the site, they publish the root certificate in, in DNS with, with DNSSEC. And by publishing that uh, server certificate, the user agent is able to see if you're connected to the right site, because the, server, ser the site's server is also, con is also signed with the, with the same certificate authority. So if you connect to a site, you, you, you get a certain certificate authority, and the user agent knows, OK, it's this certificate authority, and I have these two keys for that. Which of those two keys do you want for the certificate authority? And if, was, if there, there comes a um, uh, a phishing attack, so, so for example, a bank would use this protocol and you get this mail from some, from this scary mail that says that something is going wrong with your bank and you should log in. If you follow that mail, you follow the link, you get to a site that's not a bank's site. And the, the bank should never sign a certificate for any other systems than its own systems. That's just not good, uh, good measure. So the only, the only certificates, uh, the only thing that the, uh, the, the fishers can do is create their own uh, certificate. But that's a different certificate than from the bank. So to your user agent, that's a completely new site. So if you want to log in, your certificate of your user agent will say, oh, hey, this is a new site. Do you want to create an account? Just like I got those messages, do you want to create an account? And if that's happening, then you should probably say, hey, I already have an account at the bank. Why isn't it there? Then you go back to your list of, uh, of sites, you see the bank is there, you click on it, you log in, and you're connected to the right site. And the fishers don't stand any chance. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, you are creating questions over questions. Next question. One question, if I understood you correctly, the, you have a local proxy that handles all the private key stuff with the authorities. So how exactly do you intend to support multiple devices? So a user has his computer, a laptop, a smartphone, and all this stuff, and the private keys have to be exchanged between these devices. How do you suggest to solve that? Well, uh, well good question. Uh, the reason I built it in a proxy server was because it was just the easiest. Eventually, you want to build it into a browser, but if you build it into a browser, you really need to get to know deep into the browser where it's opened the TLS connections, 
and I d didn't want to figure that out for browsers because they keep changing so much. Eventually, um, are you familiar with um, Mo Mozilla's um, mechanism of uh, tra uh, transporting your your um, your profiles from one computer to the other? Okay, well, that, that, that same mechanism you, you can use for this. Instead of key, passwords and, and bookmarks, you just send the private keys over. It, you should use a, a, a good protocol for that, and if this would take off, then people will, will bring, come up with these protocols to do that securely. But yeah, if you lose everything, then you, you lose your data, so it's a good, it's a good thing to uh, have your keys in multiple places where you can trust them, one in your phone, one in your computer, one on a backup disk, and so if you lose some, then you can go back to your backup disk and get back the keys that are still there. So for that, it's not in this protocol, but it's something you can do uh, besides. And I would really advise uh, anyone to do that. Yes, thank you. Pleasure. I think we saw so many questions. This shows that there was really, really interest in this talk. And uh, also that a lot of people were following it and trying to audit your system. So. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Uh.